A brand new AI model just dropped quietly and it might be the most powerful open source model. It's called Optimus Alpha. It's free. It's insanely good at coding and it's built for developers. I put it to the test as a coding assistant with raw code in Visual Studio Code and what I have found actually will surprise you. So let's dive in. If we check the Optimus Alpha page on Open Router, which only page that have official information about this model, it seems like it have been created four days ago by the time I'm recording this video, and it have one million context links. It's pretty impressive. Seems like a Google thing to do have one million context links, and it say that it's clogged model. Basically, it's a it's not a full release. It's a, it's a stills release, and the model is provided to the community to gather feedback, and it's created toward real world use cases including programming and there is a note here it's of course they're gonna take all the prompts and completion output of this model that we're using to provider of this model and it will be used to improve this model and train it to be better the good thing this model is right now fully free and you can use it unlimited and i also found this page which very very sketchy i don't know i don't feel good about this page at all i'm not gonna use it i'm gonna use only open router it say here a few information that we already know like 1 million tokens capability is better than the open ai 128k limits okay the multi-model intelligence have text code and visual content generation allow you direct creation creation of a functional application eliminating the open ai's need for separated tool like the dali e and it have adaptive learning engine and this is very weird our model continuously improved through real-time user interaction well competitor requires schedule model update to implement improvement and i don't know what they mean have adaptive learning engine like they train the model every time someone put a new input to it or what's going on like does he have a new version every single week i don't know but as i told you this model, as you can see here, is fully free, new usage barrier, and it's a commercial use also, not, doesn't need new subscription, compared to the ChatGPT Plus that started at $20, which I don't know why they compare it heavily to OpenAI. It seems like this company or whatever team is this, is heavily competing against OpenAI. And to be honest, right now OpenAI models is not the top for coding anymore. We have right now the Sonus 3.7 and the Gemini 2.5. These models are insane at coding. And this model have no rate limits as much as you want in this testing phase. I'm pretty sure this is very limited. It might be stay like this for a week or two. At maximums and it will stop basically functional like the quizar model right now and because the 1 million context links this model is heavily compared to the gemini 2.5 bro from google as you can see here there is someone created this article comparing these two model about the creator nobody know honestly so far who created the optimus alpha and the quizar alpha but it's a stills release on open router only. Of course, mention here, the status of this model is right now testing and feedback phase and only 1 million tokens context and it has 32,000 tokens in terms of output, which it's decent. And the optimization for this model is really heavily focusing on coding and the speed and long context. It's similar to Google latest model. It's extremely fast, near instant coding, and I will see this actually by myself. I didn't test it yet. Basically, it's a replacement or the better version of Quasar Alpha, but I really like the name Optimus Alpha. Very mean material name. I have been speaking a lot about this model so far. Let's stop talking and start coding. I'm gonna plug this model inside my raw code and see how it will perform in a real coding scenarios. In my raw code, I created a new profile called Optimus Alpha and it's based on Open Router API provider. I bought my AI key and selected Open Router slash Optimus Alpha. And right now it's so far it's for free and I tested it. It's not taking a single cent from my current money in Open Router. So I will hit done. And I already have selected this Optimus Alpha model at the code mode when I'm using raw code. 
And I have this project that's basically will be used heavily in the coming videos to test the upcoming model encoding. It's a simple Next.js with Express in the back end and Prisma as a database. It's online airline booking tickets. Very simple, but I can test any model with it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a couple of tasks right now. One at least and the back end, one at the front end and see how it will perform. For my first prompt, I will be asking it to create an order history based on the schema database and I will provide it over here. And I will give it also the controller that I want to see the logic inside. And I'm using a method called prompt chaining method. I talked about the prompting chaining method like heavily in my coming book. It's about coding with AI. And I'm still on the phase of designing this book. And hopefully I will end it by this month. So I can give you a version of it to So you can give me some feedback about what I have wrote in this book. Anyway, let's keep going. I will hit enter and see how it act. The first keynote that I have, it's very good at analyzing the schema that I have in my current project. I took a look and basically said this, the stuff that I need to work with in this order. And I need to create a function that will fetch all the details for the user by the ID. And it created a new function called get charter order history. And before it wrote anything, it checked if the file is empty or not. So it can see if it's safely to add anything that it need, or it will have to rewrite certain stuff. And bam, it went ahead and created the function immediately. The cool thing about this kind of function writing, look at this. It created multiple ways to detect where is the user ID? One from the middleware token, basically, and the second one from the query, and the third one, parameters. And if there is no user ID, it will show an error. And here it created a function, basically, that will check the Barisma history ID table with the user ID, and it parses it to be a number, order descending, including the shorter order and the pricing, all the details that I need, basically. And then it created a response in JSON. And if there is an error, it will console log it. And finally, it will return a response for the error if there is an error issue. But the only problem that I noticed that I'm using the module type, not the ESE type. So I need to switch from require to import, but this is not a real issue. I can ask it to do that. For a start, this is really good. And as you can see here, the ABI cost is bunch of zero. It means like I'm using this model for free and the context window it's see like it's a very small ant compared to what I can do with it and for the second attempt it seemed like it's much much faster I don't know why but this is really cool and I all I required and instead of using require I wanted to use import and it immediately did this and I noticed also there is something very good that most of the model doesn't do is writing a detailed comment about what kind of function is this and where is the router should be and what is the kind of access is. I didn't require or ask for this kind of stuff. And I don't think that raw code have modified the system prompt for it. This is a really good touch. I don't know, but like so far, I like this model. For my second attempt, I'm using the same kind of logic, but creating a balanced history for the user. Right now, it's trying to create it from the start and give it everything. I didn't skip the Barisma database connection or the error handling function that I have created. And it seemed like it's understand what I want immediately and it started to create it and hit save. Once more, it created a detailed comment about this kind of function, what to do. And here is the logic it's similar to the last one. And as you can see here, it fetched the history from the database with the information that I need and handling error at the end with the response in a JSON format. Okay, that's really decent, but we can add new stuff on top of it, like pagination and seeing if the user can be fetched by the username, not just user ID or the email, multiple way to fetch the same information. And here one more test, I will give it an already existing code that I have, and I will ask it to improve it in terms of the comments and see if there is any error or potential issue in the future. And basically I will ask it to handle it before it happened. I have three functions in this controller, or forget one for the user balance history, and basically one for seeing the details of the history transaction. And the result for this is really decent. I can see there is more comments 
information about each function and it created something called input validation defensive coding basically if something fail it will not uh, throw an uh, error for the server it will handle it and detailed comment for each function which i already have seen this and it say the code now follow best practice for parameter handling and error management and documentation making it more robust and maintainable this model know what we need already this this is really great i mean like i don't know who is behind this model but thank him and for my final back end test for now i will ask it to create an endpoint router logic inside this file called the balance called the balance history router.js and and i didn't tell it like a lot of details all i asked just look to the controller that we created inside the same task and create a router endpoint for each function and it created this also with ease and also a description what kind of router should i hit what kind of access should i be used and honestly, it's in the access is still a little bit confused because it doesn't know if it should be a public or protected. I have to create middleware for that. Then after that, ask it to put it in the main portal router and it done that already. And finally, this was the last one. I give it a very basic and not detailed at all prompt telling it add this to the server file. This kind of prompt should be not used in general, but this is kind of test to see if this model have the capability of understanding what kind of task with a very minimal details. And it went ahead, found the server GS file that I have in the main folder and analyze it, found there is two more ABIs, main, uh, more two main ABIs, a client and admin. So it created the portal, which is the third one, and basically added the code for it and it's done and i had to run the server to see if there is any error and so far none this model is very good so far i mean i could spend the entire day testing it at the back end and created more logic but the speed and zero cost the context windows and the performance so far is excellent now for the front end i have this two endpoint register and login very basic nothing very special or difficult about it but i don't have a front end component for it so i'm gonna create these two components or two pages for these two function right now and see how this model can handle creating front end and maybe just set up the entire theme for the project and see how it can use it for the front end, we start by creating a reusable theme provider component. And I told it I want it to be inside this file, theme provider, and it will be using Tailwind CSS. This is an enhanced prompt. If you didn't notice, it's not my prompt. An enhanced prompt is one of the stuff that I recommend people using it when you want more detail for your prompt. I wrote also about it in my upcoming ebook. Basically, you took a, your simple prompt, your head enhance of whatever model that you're using. I recommend, for example, the DeepSeq version 3.1, which is a very good model. Also, it's for free. I talked about it in a previous model. Here, you can see here manage theme status, like a dark switching, applying the colors. It's global using a hook. It will save the user preference inside the local storage for the browser. And as you can see here, says support system preference detection which is kind of overkill for the entire the component is created really fast but i feel like it have flexed on other model by creating a usage cases i never seen a model do that for example in the app layout.js it should you should put it like this scene provider on top of the children basically you will use the children as normal inside the layout the other one in any component you will use it like that you will use it like this you seem and the theme toggle and here to override theme in the sub tree you will be using it like this for example if you want a certain component to be dark always you can give it the value of dark this is really good i have to be honest and now i have to just set the color and configure it tailwind to have two theme one dark mode and one light mode and basically create color for two both different for the two different themes Right after multiple stuff that I have wrote to this task, which is a very long task, to be honest, I don't recommend to do this all of stuff in one chat, break it bar to a different task like I recommended in my book. But I finally got this. Look at this. Very smooth switching colors. 
and the dark side of this theme is really cool like it the color are of the light always hurt my eyes this is why i recommend using dark theme in visual studio code to all my friends and i have no idea how people code for hours on the light themes this is like superpower that i don't have anyway let me walk you through the task that i have created after i have created the theme provider which we have seen together it created this kind of tailwind configuration but it told me you should put the code by yourself and I told it like, why? Like you have the capability to add this code by yourself. And it went ahead, see if this, even the file existed and it didn't. So it, it started to create it by itself and created the global CSS colors. Then it created the tailwind configuration. I got some sort of warning to improve the writing of this current file. And I told it about it, that I'm getting the warning assign object to a variable before exporting and the module default, please fix it. And it went ahead and fixed it. This is like the third task by now. And then I told it like, please. And I, then I told it, okay, now apply the theme provider to the main page that we have in this project. Then it added, but it had an issue. I couldn't see anything in the light theme, nothing there. Like, Everything was white, except maybe the icons. And I told it like, I can't see anything. Everything is white. And it went ahead and fixed the colors once more. So far, I am having a blast with this model. I don't know when it's going to be ending in terms of the phase of testing. But so far, this model can be your day-to-day -day model to use. I'm not even done. I didn't even create the register and login component yet. And this is my next step. For the login page, I will ask it. Also, there's an enhance broad to create a login page with a clean UI. Look at the register functionality so you can understand what we need to send. Use the theme provider that we just created. Create a component inside the web folder. And now this is the login page, basically. After I have struggled with it because it couldn't switch the current light scene in this component. And I don't know why. And I don't know. I feel like in the front end, it's lacking a little bit. Like this can be multiple time better. And it's, it's, I don't know. It's turned off a little bit. But if I can give it a component and the login page, or the login page is better than that, and I tell it to work with it might be a better, I will try this also. I managed to push the model slightly above and beyond for its capability for the front end, but I feel like front end, it's slightly not that good so far. Even it have the capability to create a good logic, but when it comes to the UI design and the user experience, it's not that, that, that good at all. I have to be honest. The DeepSeek version 3.1 is better. The Sonnet, of course, is better. The new GPT-4 uh, model, which released after the Gemini model, is actually better. Of course, the Gemini 2.5 Pro model is better. So when it comes to front-end, this model is not that great, but there is a trick that you can do when working with kind of this model, especially in the front-end. When you have a solid UI design to work with, for example, you created this project at first with Sonnet 3.5 and you want to build on top of it, you can tell it to copy the same UI style and use it in the rest of the project. This is basically that you can do. But honestly, I will stop right now about talking about this model. So do I recommend using this model, the Optimus Alpha model? Yes, go ahead immediately right now, integrate it inside your workflow, row code or client or whatever assistant that you're using until the phase of the feedback is done. It's kind of a free gift. Temporarily, you can use it, but I highly recommend it. If you want to use, if you want to use it, go ahead. I highly recommend it. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video actually respecting your time and providing you with valuable information about this model, please hit the like and subscribe button. And finally, thank you guys for watching and see you on the coming one.